we do have what we can call a thriving private sector involvement in education and training at all levels, of course. The government provides a conducive environment for private institutions to operate in Botswana. If we concentrate on the tertiary level, the investors or the private provider will normally put up uh, their facilities or invest in the, in the infrastructure. But the government then commits to sponsoring students to those private institutions in Botswana. Uh, for, for, for many years, Botswana has been known to be, I think, the only country in Africa that is sponsoring so many people, young people all over the world. We do have uh, only one public institution operating currently in Botswana. My permanent secretary used to say, while we have one back at home, we do have all other institutions all over the world as our own because we are able to send students all over the world. We do have students, a lot of them in South Africa, I think close to 3,000 government-sponsored students in South Africa. We have them in Australia, New Zealand, the UK, Canada, USA, and other parts of the, 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 the world. So I think the, the intention is also to reverse the outward mobility of students, even though it is very critical for us to continue for purposes of uh, international benchmarking, to continue having students outside the country. It is also very critical that we reduce the massive numbers of students that we invest in that go outside the country. Yesterday, when somebody was talking about the drain brain drain, that really hit home because uh, we, we, we train people in critical areas that we have, we, we have considered critical to the economy of the country. But what often happens is that young, these young people, once they get the necessary qualifications out there in the US, in the UK, in Australia, then the governments or employers in those countries decide to keep them. Uh, I will not name one country where we have trained lots of uh, people in the health sector, mainly doctors. And two years ago, as part of the project that I was uh, working on, setting up the second university in Botswana, we discovered that in that country we had more than 100 Botswana doctors. And all of them were government sponsored. They stayed there. It's not always easy to get them back to Botswana because sometimes you will be accused of uh, interfering in, in their rights as humans. Th that is the, re the reality. I, I, I take consolation from the fact that when you have these young people out there, they do gain experience, they learn a lot, they do make money, and to, in a significant way, they continue to contribute towards our economy because they would be funding their siblings back at home. They would be, and I can guarantee you, when they grow older, they get mature, they will come back home as investors. They will be more educated and they, they will be real investors because when they come home, they'll come home to stay, not just to test the environment. I, the, the, the areas that have potential for investment, I did say we have business and management, and we are saying here, we did engage some, some consultants who did a bit of research to see if indeed these areas can be helpful towards investors. And it was pointed out that for business and management, there is a need to establish uh, a credible business school that will not only appeal to a wide variety of African students in the business manager leadership development, but even others from all over the world. The intention would be to establish, or establish a venture with the investor's own or alternative brand name, or we could establish a business school as a Botswana brand in association with, with an investor, or we can develop a Botswana business school with an exit option after a period of time. 
In the hospitality and tourism, again, there is a potential for a project that could be, for, for instance, a photographic safari tourism training institution. We do have a, a thriving uh, a, a tourism industry with a huge potential for growth, and we definitely do need personnel who can work in this industry. We are saying in the medical science, there is an opportunity for training in medical and health science research. A medical research and training institute may be an opportunity to provide uh, clinical research and laboratory skills training. We may be thinking of a center for, sorry, let me say, we do have a center for disease control and Harvard School of Public Health AIDS initiative. These are located in Botswana. And to me, this provides an opportunity for strategic partnerships to establish a center for excellence in the training of healthcare workers in research skills. I, I, I don't think we can go wrong in this area. We are all very much aware that uh, health personnel are needed by each and every country in, in sub-Saharan Africa and throughout the world, actually. I was just talking about the 100 Botswana doctors in uh, one Western country. Uh, recently, we have a public service strike in Botswana, the first of its kind, in the last two months or so. Our nurses were on strike demanding higher salaries. And what we experienced is that some of the countries, even our own neighbors, were say, apparently saying to them, you come, you, if you don't want to have a job, they come quickly. We are waiting, we need more nurses in our country. So this is a critical area where nobody can go wrong if they invest in this area. There is so much uh, need for personnel from health -related, uh, with health-related uh, skills and experiences. Uh, we, I think we are all aware that there is a growing global interest in research in TB, for instance, in HIV and AIDS, in malaria, and these are very common diseases in, in, in Africa, and training in this area is, should be attractive to regional and international students. We are saying in mining and energy, again, the opportunity to establish technical institutions in this area. In agriculture and livestock, I think we see an opportunity for positioning Botswana as a center of excellence for post-harvest technologies and food quality research training uh, through the establishment of a credible training institution. Uh, Botswana is, uh, I think, the largest beef exporting country in, 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 South, in, in Africa certainly the largest beef producing country and beef exporting country in Africa. And lots of uh, animal products, cow hides and so forth, go to waste in Botswana. We don't seem to have the necessary technology to put all of them to, 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 to use. We don't seem to have the necessary skills and expertise to put all of these uh, products to use. Democracy, governance, and economic management, again, here we are saying there is a potential for creating, uh, for creation of a democracy, governance, and economic management institute. Uh, there is a potential for investment in ICT in Botswana. We do have a policy that is called MAITLAMO. And this is the national ICT policy. Maitlamo means commitment. And it states, among other things, that Botswana will be a globally competitive knowledge base and information society where lasting improvements in social, economic, and cultural developments are achieved through effective use of ICT. The key aspects of this uh, Maitlamo policy cover community access and development, learning, government online, health, ICT, and economic diversification, infrastructure, and uh, connectivity. Some of the main activities outlined in the policy that are presently implemented include the Connecting Communities pro Program, which is meant to provide communities with affordable access to computers and the internet. We have uh, the tutor net and tutor means education which is designed to expose learners 
to effective education using ICT. There is the e-government program aimed at improving public service productivity with the number of uh, government services now offered online through, our, through a government uh, portal. Uh, Tutor.net is covered in the policy to promote e-learning and we see it as critical component of uh, the Maitlamo policy and it's its main targets are to provide all schools with uh, PCs and inter uh, internet.